Hi guys, my name is Irene and I'm from Russia. Welcome to my channel where I tell you the whole truth about my country. And today we are going to talk about superstitions. Let's go! There are some common universal notions about superstitions. People all over the world would probably be a bit cautious when they see figures 13 or 666 or a black cat crossing the street. But where do superstitions come from? I've watched TED Ed video, which is called Where Do Superstitions Come From? And I've learned several interesting facts about them. They say that some superstitions have religious roots. Others derive from uh, unfortunate coincidences. And some of them have historical roots and they are actually reasonable. All superstitions are cultural habits rooted somewhere deep in our brain, so even rational people sometimes believe in superstitions. And it's, it's way simpler for us just to follow simple rituals than to intentionally avoid them. But we Russians are especially nuts when it comes to superstitions and when we find ourselves in a company of foreigners, they are usually shocked by our behavior. Many superstitions common today in countries from Russia to Ireland are thought to be remnants of the pagan religions that Christianity replaced. I've made a list of superstitions my family and I follow. Number one, during the feasts, we never leave empty bottles on the table. We put them under the table. This superstition goes back to the beginning of the 19th century, when we had a military campaign in France. Our people like to go into the local taverns, and tavern owners build us with, um, according to the, the amount of empty bottles on the tables. So, cunning Russian people wanted to save money and they just put some empty bottles under the table so in order to lower the bills. Nowadays, leaving empty bottles on the table may cause misfortune and lack of money according to the widespread belief. So please, don't let empty bottles stay on your table. Put them aside. Maybe throw them out just in case. Got no bottles. Number two, unmarried women shouldn't sit at the corner. Otherwise, they risk staying in spinsters forever, or at least for seven years. Many centuries ago, only poor relatives, ugly women, and free lotus sat at the corner of a table. So people started gossiping like, my dear, if you sit at the corner, you will end like them, or at least risk becoming one of them, of those spinsters. Personally, I never sit at the corner, though I'm officially engaged. Um, but even after the wedding, I think I will still avoid it, just in case, you know. We are just three kindly old spitzer ladies! Number three, sitting down before setting off. When we are about to start a journey and to leave home to go to the airport, railroad station or a bus station, we sit down for a while. This rule is applicable as to the travelers as to those who stay at home. This superstition dates back to pagan times when people believed in various spirits. They thought that if you leave home in a rush, then house spirit, we call it domovoy, will follow you and leave the house without any protection. So when you come back home, there will be no home anymore. So people outwitted those spirits and pretended they were never living. They were just having short breaks. Mm, uh, my family and I always follow this rule and we always sit down on our suitcases before setting off. Take a seat because no one's going anywhere. Number four, if you forget something and return back home, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Our ancestors believed that coming back home brings bad luck. If one wants to outsmart the fortune, they'd rather look oneself in the eyes, and then everything would be fine. 
Each time I forget an umbrella or a hat, without taking my boots off, I sneak into the bathroom where I have a mirror, take a glance at myself, smile to my reflection, and that's the rule I've never broken. Seriously. Well, look at yourself in the mirror. Number five, knock on wood or spit over the shoulder three times. I do both. It's a kind of protection from the evil eye. I must confess I use it wrongly. Um, whenever I predict something bad that is going to happen, for example, um, that I'm going to be an underdog for the rest of my days, I knock three times on wood and spit over my shoulder also three times. Just like that. It's my habit from childhood, I can't change it. But indeed, people should use it when, um, when they are praised or something good is approaching. For example, a forthcoming vacation or promotion. People follow these tricks um, not to scare off good luck. The superstition comes from ancient times, when people believed in special connection with the spirits which lived in the trees. Later, it was associated with the cross of Jesus Christ. It is considered that you should knock on oak, which is rather pricey, and people prefer sometimes to knock just on their own heads, like that, saying that there is no big difference, so it's kind of a joke. My dad does that too. Knock, 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 knock. Number six, don't take out the trash in the evening. I hate this one especially because I'm absolutely okay to take out the trash in the evening. I like tidiness, but my fiance always says that it brings bad luck and we should wait till the morning when it starts to rotten, decay and stink. I think he uses this superstition for his own benefit. Let's go back to the origin of this tradition. When there were no TV sets and internet, people were bored to death and the only means of entertainment was staring through the window and looking at people passing by. And when they saw some people leaving their homes late in the evening, carrying some mysterious bags, they immediately started spreading rumors like those people had some skeletons in the closets, they were probably outlaws and some immoral guys who have their own secrets, so we won't trust them. It's time to take out the trash. Number seven, walk around utility poles. When you see them, you shouldn't enter uh, the passage between them. You should step aside and walk around. It is considered to be better, because otherwise wait for the series of unfortunate events. Some people consider that these are gates of the devil. Others say that only ill people come to such gates, and if a healthy person enters it, um, they will they will get this disease actually and um, there are also people who say that it's a magical underworld and only magicians and wizards can enter it and ordinary people should avoid it it's just a bunch of hocus pocus <laughs> number eight when cutlery falls down it may mean different things according to the type of the cutlery Let's start with a knife. A knife has a oblong shape, and objects with such shape are associated with man, so it's like a male attribute. If a knife falls down, then an enemy will appear at your th threshold. Um, a spoon is has a roundish shape and it is associated with women, so it's a female attribute. If a spoon falls down, 
Then it, it says us about a forthcoming visit of a lady with good intentions. A fork, when it only appeared on our tables, had two tines and it was associated with a devil with two horns. So people tried to beware of such kitchenware. And a fallen fork means a forthcoming visit of a lady with bad intentions. Wait a second, is that the fork that fell on the floor? Number nine, don't sew holes in the clothing while wearing it. First, take it off and only then start sewing. The explanation of this superstition is very simple. Many years ago, people didn't have antibiotics. And if one wasn't careful enough with a needle and pricked oneself, it could cause blood poisoning and lead to death. And nowadays, people connect this superstition with some magical rituals. And they say that if you saw holes in the clothing while wearing it, you may lose all your memory. But we sew them on! Number 10. Don't whistle at home. Our ancestors believed that while whistling, we summon evil spirits. Additionally, our kind-hearted house spirit, the Mavoy, could get offended and leave home for good. Nowadays, it is considered that if you whistle, um, there will be no money in your family for many, many years. Whistle! That was it. Subscribe to my channel in case you've enjoyed the video. See ya!